Welcome to the Den Urban Dog Retreat, where we are dedicated to elevating dogs and their humans to higher states of consciousness and deeper connections. My name is Sarah Lee, I am an animal communicator, and today I'm going to be talking about how to effectively communicate with your animal. Step one is understanding what communication is. 93% of communication is non-verbal. So when we think about that, we know scientifically that humans and animals communicate without using words for the most part. A lot of communication comes from verbal cues, physical cues, and most importantly, intuition and instinct. Animals read our energy, and unlike human beings, animals don't have an ego layer. So they are working in their environment and with their humans constantly. Human beings have an ego that blocks us from really receiving what's going on around us and from connecting with our intuition. When we look at dogs, dogs have been domesticated over years and years. It is in their DNA to form companionship with human beings. It is in their DNA to seek leadership and guidance from the human beings in the home. When we look at it in this way, we realize that we are fully in control of how they experience the world, the information they receive, and how they react to the world around them. Often I have clients who will call me and tell me that their animals were perfectly fine when they were going on a walk, and all of a sudden they snapped out of nowhere, or they got aggressive, or they got scared, or they got timid. And my first question is always asking them, well, what did you feel in that moment? How did you feel when you were walking down the street? And every single time, 10 out of 10 times, the person says, oh, well, I got a really bad feeling about this person, or I got a shock, or I was worried about how my dog was gonna to react to something. And knowing this and seeing that pattern, we see that we directly affect the way in which our animal experiences everything moment to moment. Animals are very connected to our energy and so we know that we can affect their energy and the way that they experience everything positively or negatively. And this is where mindfulness and being in control of your subconscious and your energy body really comes into play. Often when people are having discord in the home, their animal is negatively affected. When the animal is acting out, acting ag aggressive, is snapping at a particular person in the home, there is always a very specific reason where this behavior stems from. When I work with clients or work with animals that are behaving out of character, my first thing is finding the core of the issue. Once we find the core, we can find the solution to move forward in a more harmonious way. But the only way that you can find the core is to learn to sit and notice what is happening right now. What is happening for you, what is happening for your body, what is happening for the animals in your home, and how the dynamic is shifting. Because we know that 93% of communication is non-verbal and we know that we can inform animals using tonation of voice, our body language, our feelings, the way that our energy is, we know that we can effectively communicate with our animals. So when you are noticing something negative happening, negative behavior, negative um, feelings that your animal is experiencing, the first thing that you're going to do is sit, notice what's happening, check in with yourself, check in with your dog and re find what the core of this issue is. Find where the energy has shifted and how you can now positively manipulate that energy. You actually have the power to change everything. You don't always have to come to an animal communicator. Not only do we have the beautiful gift of voice and physical being to communicate with our animals and to affect what's happening in the home and to project an idea to them, but we also have the amazing ability to communicate through intuition and instinct. Unlike humans, dogs don't have an ego, as I said before. So dogs have an incredibly developed intuition. Animals have to survive, so they use instincts all the time. But they also don't communicate through language like human beings do. So they communicate through energy. Animals pick up on the most subtle energy shifts, and this is something that we have to realize. It's very important for you to know that you have an intuition and the ability to project ideas in your mind before you can communicate with your animal. 
I work with people on a daily basis, having them understand that the image and the concept that they have in their mind is what they are sending to the animal. And once we're very aware of what is happening in our mind, and the ideas and projections we are putting out into the world, we can positively manipulate those, them, change those ideas and those belief systems, and you will be pleasantly surprised how then your animal's behavior changes. internal compass that can give us all the information that we need. If you're experiencing discord in the home, take a second, sit down, notice the energy in the home, notice the energy in your body and the energy in your dog's body, notice what's happened this whole week, notice what's shifted the energy and the experience in a positive way or a negative way, what is and what isn't working. Secondly, you can communicate with your dogs if you learn to just sit down and trust yourself. If the concept of receiving information through intuition weren't true, then I wouldn't have a fully fledged business working with these same ideas on a daily basis. If you allow yourself the time to sit down and notice what's going on around you and to get the information, you'll be pleasantly surprised by the information that you get. A lot of people that are starting to work with their intuition and try to discover what's going on for their dog and try to communicate with their own dogs will often talk to me about how they took the time to sit down and the weirdest information came and they weren't sure if it was imagination, if they were making it up, if it actually was an experience that the dog was showing them. Here's my idea on that. Out of the millions of things that your brain could come up with and show you, why that specific experience that you've never experienced before? Why that specific taste or smell or concept? Intuition doesn't lie. And so trust the information that comes. It is so beautiful when we learn to get rid of our ego and trust the crazy stuff that can come to us because it's very much real. Communicating with animals really starts with us. It starts with learning to trust oneself, getting in touch with oneself and getting in touch with one's intuition. Once you trust yourself enough and get rid of self-doubt, you will be so pleasantly surprised by the ability that you have to understand and feel others around you. If people can seek out information via intuition with other people, you can definitely do it with dogs. In fact, it is far easier in my experience to seek out information through animals and human beings because animals don't have an ego layer that blocks them like humans do. So I hope these small tips have helped. Once you realize that animals and humans are exactly the same, we have the same experiences, it just doesn't look or sound the same. Once you understand that and you learn to trust yourself and know that you already have all the tools, you just have to use them, you are well on your way to beautifully communicating with the animals in your home and probably other animals around you. We are so grateful that you took the time to be here for yourself and your pet. Click the link in our bio to book a wellness experience today.